Hi again, welcome back. So this is the second half of the triggers and exacerbations for our point. So today we are going to talk about how to prevent triggers and exacerbations. And we're starting off with a nice pretty slide here. So you can see when everything's nice and good, our nice open airways. And so there's plenty of room going through those, but then when we have an exacerbation, especially in COPD, that airway really constricts down. So we're going to talk about today how to prevent that from happening. All right, so we finished up last time with getting out of the cold. So we're going to talk about how to keep warm. So just like I mentioned last time in the class, you want to protect your head and your face so that you limit that sh exposure. And so that's even going outside to bring in mail, uh, going up to warm up the car, your body can lose a lot of heat very fast. So that means putting a hat on your head and then the face mask or scarf uh, around that the, around your face and your nose. So that allows that warm pocket of air for you to breathe in so that you don't have those bronchial spasms and that you don't have that lung constriction, that blood vessel constriction in your lungs as much. All right, so uh, some other ways to work on preventing your exacerbation is working on airway clearance. And so this is just working if you feel like you're starting to have a little bit of congestion in there. These are some coughing techniques that you can use to help clear it up. So it's an inhale and then a huh, huh, huh. So making that huff sound about two to three times. And so what that's doing is it's causing you to breathe in and so that you're keeping all that air moving in your lungs and we're trying to prevent the settling. Um, so you can do some postural changes where you actually do this while you're upside down. Um, to kind of get some drainage, you can use a vibrating vest, which is coming up in the next slide. You can do the controlled coughing, which is you inhale and then you <laughs> and <laughs> give those good couple of coughs, relaxing for a few seconds between them. Because what the cough is doing is it's actually rattling those lungs a little bit, and so that you're able to get in the breath and move that mucus that is in your lungs. So we want to move it around so that it doesn't sit. So this slide goes into a little bit more about what we were just talking about. So you've got the postural drainage, which is up here in this top section. Um, and so, like I said, if you can get inverted, what it does is it gets the bottom of your lungs up higher than your heart. And so that you're able to come down and uh, work on getting what's at the bottom of your lungs up closer to the top so that you can get it out and it doesn't settle down there. Uh, the PEP therapy here, uh, which is looking at using your inspirometer or those ins um, insensitive <laughs> spirometer or your inspiration trainer that we uh, some of you have gotten or a flutter valve. What all of these are designed to do is help you work on training those muscles in your lungs so that you're making them stronger. So you inhale and exhale and then take a few normal breaths before you start using it. And then as you use it on an insensitive spirometer, you're going to inhale as much air as you can. And you're going to try to get that valve to go as high as you can so that you're getting that increasing that inhalation. Uh, and then you want to do that 10 times an hour. And then you've also got an inhalation uh, trainer, which is kind of what she's using here. And that's going to give you one where you're just going to work on inhaling and it's going to make those muscles work a little bit more. And then you can have a flutter valve as well. Uh, oftentimes you'll get those when you're in the hospital. Uh, usually they're little green ones. And you and when you breathe on that one, it actually causes your lungs to rattle a little bit. And so they, it basically, all of these things are designed to keep the air moving in your lungs so that the stuff doesn't settle in the bottom of your lungs. And then the last one you're here is wearing a vibrating vest. So they do have these vests that are designed to rattle you. And they basically, you put them on uh, and you Velcro in, so that, and then you sit there for about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the machine and depending on the make and model of your vest. But it basically will, will rattle you and shake you. Um, and so be, what it's trying to do is, again, loosen everything up, keep everything moving so that it loosens up the mucus so that you can continue to breathe nicely. Um, stay out of crowds. So this is the whole reason for social distancing uh, currently. So a cough and particulate matter can stay in the air and suspended for 24 hours. This picture here is actually a cough cloud. So that's a cough cloud. And imagine if you were in a sneezing cloud. So the sneeze will go a little few feet further than just a cough. But look at how much debris is caused out and look how far away it will go. Uh, so there is a 
video out there, and I'll share it again with you guys, that from Mythbusters. Um, so I don't know if any of you remember that show at all, but the Mythbusters actually tested to see how far you could sneeze and how long particles will stay on there. But they ended up sneezing, and it went 16 feet. 16 feet! That's huge. That's long. That's really far away. That's like two normal sized rooms. All right. Uh, and so you really want to be careful about staying out of crowds, especially when it's flu season and right now in the COVID-19 uh, epidemic that's going on, the pandemic. So staying out of those crowds is really going to be important. And this is why. And this is also the reason why we wear face masks right now. Uh, because if you're keeping it to yourself, it's going to stay with you. Uh, if somebody else is out and about and they caught, they did it and they were infected, well, if you're wearing your face mask, you're not going to pick it up as much. And that's really what we're looking at there. Wash your hands. And yes, you were supposed to wash your hands before all this happened. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're using antibacterial soap and wash your hands for 20 seconds to so 15 to 30 seconds. And make sure you're getting everything. So you wash the front, then you wash the back of both hands, you wash between your fingers, you wash your thumbs, and then again, make sure you're rubbing the back of your hands, your fingers, and then get your wrist as well. So using a good hand hygiene, uh, singing happy birthday to yourself, singing your ABCs, all of these things. There's all sorts of memes out there right now about how to remind you to wash your hands. So very, very important. And it helps you keep germs away as well. Exercise, my favorite topic, is going to give you immunity boost. It's going to improve your breathing. It's going to make you stronger. Who doesn't want to be stronger? And remember, we are trying to improve your quality of life here. So exercise is very key um, to doing that. It decreases your sensitization to feeling short of breath. Because when you exercise, yes, we do expect you to get a little bit winded. And that is perfectly normal. But as we do it more, you're going to be able to continue to exercise, continue to breathe, and know that you're okay. So that helps with the fear of it and so it's decreased in anxiety and depression as well it's been shown to be just as effective on depression and anxiety as medication is uh, you exercise for 30 to 45 minutes and you get a boost for the next six to eight hours uh, it improves your dynamic hyperinflation what that means it improves your ability to expand those lungs and ex when you are breathing heavier and so that you're going to get better expansion so you're able to breathe better you're going to get more gas exchange it improves your skeletal muscle function which just makes you stronger it makes you more functional long term and you're able to go and do more uh, each day so other things to consider when you're extra uh, besides just exercise is making sure you eat a balanced diet and i know melissa has talked to each and every one of you about this um, so making sure you're getting good fruits and vegetables, lots of leafy greens, lean meats, low fat, um, so that you're getting a good balanced diet using that my plate method. Um, get enough sleep. We talked about that in our sleep class. Remember the magic number is six hours. You need to get a minimum of six hours of sleep each night not to have ill effects. But you also don't want to sleep too much. So if you're getting more than nine hours of sleep, you can have just the opposite. And you could just be sleeping too much then. Making sure you get your flu shot and you don't know on your vaccination every year, just like every, um, so that you can stay healthy. Because when you get those shots and you get those vaccinations, you build up the immunities for it, you build up the antibodies. So even if you were to contract it, um, because they're not, especially with the flu shot, it's, it's kind of a hit or miss thing. They pick the best strains. You've got the immunities and you've got the antibodies there. So you're able to help fight that infection a lot better. All right, so how to prevent it? Just like we talked about last time, use your medications. If you're not using your medications the way they are prescribed, you are only hurting yourself. So if you have an daily inhaler or a combo med or a nebulizer, use it every day, okay? Uh, in this picture over here, you can see that using your inhaler as the medication is released, it just kind of spreads everything all out um, versus when you come to class, we often will give you an in a spacer chamber to take your inhaler with and if you're not coming we don't know when you guys are coming back talk to your doctor about getting a spacer because as you can see here in this picture when you get the spacer you're gonna get more of that medication actually in your lungs and what the spacer does is it actually allows you to breathe in that medication a lot easier than if you just spray it in the back of the throat brush your teeth every day you got germs everywhere just like we talked about with washing your hands it's just as important to wash your mouth 
So making sure you brush your teeth and your gums, uh, floss every day as well, because having bad gums and bad teeth can lead to an increase of risk for infection. That's oftentimes why we see patients come in and they're needing emergency surgery. They have to have all their teeth pulled because if they don't, then there is a risk, a bigger risk of infection due to bad teeth. Uh, so it's so important that you take care of those teeth every day and going to get to the dentist when you're supposed to. Uh, and then extra ways. So we talked about vacuuming with the pets. Same thing. Make sure you can get vacuum every day. Um, you can get a vacuum with the HEPA filter in it. HEPA air cleaners. So you can put those in your home and they're going to help prevent that. The filters that go in the vents in the ceiling or wherever your return vents are in your house, make sure those are changed every 20 to 30 no longer than 90 days um, so the as standard is between 30 to 90 days and so that way you continue to breathe in good clean air and if you do have COPD it is even more important that you get the higher grade ones of those uh, filters so that you can continue to get that and reduce that airborne allergy all right well let us know if you have any questions and we hope you guys have a great day thank you for listening bye, -bye.